So welcome back to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be continuing with the theme of going through some big mark questions taken from some high GCSE papers. Now as always there'll be a copy of the questions that we go through in this video for you to access by click on the link in the description which I strongly recommend you have an attempt at before watching this video as we go through the answers just so you can see how well you would have done had you had these questions in an exam. Now before we get started working through these questions it's worth mentioning that before attempting these questions, it's really important that you do know these topics. Now, if you're not sure about any of the topics you can see on the screen before we go through some quite high level questions, I strongly recommend you check out the contents page, which is the link in the description and find the lessons that go over these topics in greater detail. So going straight into question one, it says in this right angle triangle, A equals 16 centimeters, A to C is in the ratio of four to five. And the question is asking us to work out the area of the triangle. Now for this, to work out the area of the triangle, we're going to use base times height divided by 2, which in this case is going to be A times B divided by 2. So in order to find the answer to this particular question, I need to find the lengths of A and B. So here I know that A is 16 centimetres. So then using the ratio, I can then work out what C is. So using the ratio, find C. So from the information that's been given to me, I know that the ratio of A to C is in the ratio of 4 to 5. I know that A is 16 centimetres, which means that 4 parts is equal to 16 centimetres, which therefore means that 1 part is going to be 4 centimetres, and therefore means that 5 parts is going to be 4 times 5, which is 20 centimetres, which looks accurate because C should be the longest side. Now from this, I could then work out B. So to work out B, use Pythagoras. So here, if I just call this X, I've then got A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So substituting the values in, I've got 16 squared plus X squared equals 20 squared. If I just zoom down a little bit. We've got 256 plus x squared equals 400. So x squared equals 400 minus 256. So x squared is going to equal 144. So x equals 12. So here I can then write 12. So then now that I've got all the lengths of the triangle, I can then work out the area. So the area of the triangle is going to be A, which is 16, times B, which is 12 divided by 2. It is on the calculator paper. I can just divide one of the numbers by 2. So let's go for this one by 8. And then from here, we're just going to do 8 times 12, which gives me an answer of 96 centimetres square. And there is my answer for that one. Moving on to question 2, it says solve this algebraic fraction. So again, here, what we want to do is we want to try and a common, find a common denominator. So here, trying to simplify this into a single fraction. So looking at the denominators, I've got 2 and 5. So here a common multiple is going to be 10. So then I'm going to multiply the first fraction by 5. And I've got x plus 8. I'm going to multiply the second fraction by 2, which I've got 9 minus x. And that all equals 4, because we can't forget that equals 4. So now that the denominators are the same, I can now write this as a single fraction over 10, in which I'm going to have 5x plus 8 plus 2 lots of 9 minus x, and that all equals 4. So now I can multiply out the brackets in the numerator, so I get 5x plus 40 plus 18 minus 2x. If I take the 10 over to the side by multiplying, that then equals 40. Then neatening up the left-hand side, I end up with 3x plus 58 equals 40. So 3x is going to equal minus 18, so therefore x is going to equal minus 6. Then moving on to question 3, it says f of x is equal to x squared plus 6x, and g of x is equal to 2x plus 4. Show that fg of x equals 4x squared plus 28x plus 40. So for this, what I need to do is I need to substitute g of x as x in f. So wherever I've kind of highlighted uh, let's just do this again so here I'm gonna whatever I highlight in pink on the f of x I'm going to substitute with the function of g of x 
So what that looks going to look like is going to look something like this. So we've got x squared, but instead of x writing x, I'm going to write 2x plus 4 squared. And instead of writing 6x, I'm going to write 6 lots of 2x plus 4. Then all that's left for me to then do is expand the brackets. Now remember that 2x plus 4 squared is equal to 2x plus 4, 2x plus 4 which then equals 4x squared plus 8x plus 8x plus 16, which equals 4x squared plus 16x plus 16. So I can just substitute all of this into the next line. And then expand the next one, which I'm going to get 12x plus 24. And that all simplifies to give me 4x squared plus 28x plus 40, which is exactly what they wanted me to show. For question B it then says solve f of x, uh, fg of x rather, equals minus 5. Now this is basically our answer in part A. So I need to make part A equal to minus 5. So that's going to be 4x squared plus 28x plus 40 equals minus 5. Now this is now slowly starting to look like a quadratic so I need to make it equal to 0 before I go on and solve it. So the next line is going to be 4x squared plus 28x plus 45 equals 0. Now at this stage you want to see can I have the coefficients of x squared x and the constant got a common factor? Well in this case no because although 4 and 28 go 45, 4 doesn't go into 45, so that's not going to be helpful. Also, I've got two even numbers and one odd number, so again, I can't simply halve them. So what I now need to do is basically solve this through factorising. So factorise. And if you factorise, you can either use the magic, magic number method or you can do it by inspection. And again, if you're not sure about how to factorise that, I'll include a link in the description below that links you to the contents page of all the videos of 162 Maths. Click on the video that helps you show or shows you how to factorize complex quadratics. But either way, we should end up with 2x plus 5 as one bracket and 2x plus 9 as the second bracket. Remember that it's equal to 0 because we are solving. So from this, what we've then got is either 2x plus 5 equals 0 or 2x plus 9 equals 0. Now again, solving this, we get 2x equals minus 5. So x equals minus 5 over 2 is one solution or 2x equals minus 9, so x equals minus 9 over 2. So the answer is either going to be minus 5 over 2 or minus 9 over 2. Alternately, you could write it as a fraction, as a decimal rather, which is going to be minus 4.5 or minus 2.5. Now again, if you did use the quadratic formula, that would be absolutely fine. Because the numbers, the decimal numbers are quite nice, it, it's going to be solvable without a calculator. But again, if this was question was on a calculator paper, then you could just go straight to the quadratic formula and solve it. You wouldn't need to factorise. But again, factorising should always be your first point of call when solving a quadratic. Moving on to the next question, it says two inches, two integers have a difference of six. The integers are multiplied together. Nine is then added. Prove algebraically that the result is always a square number. Now, when it comes to algebraic proof, whenever you see the term of two integers, you're automatically thinking, right, they're going to be two different integers, so I need to call one integer x or a, and the second integer either b or y. Now, in this case, that's not the what you have to do, because here, if you did do that, you're going to end up in a mess, and you'll be really puzzled as what to do. So here, because it says two integers with a difference of six, then that means that the first integer, if we call that x, then the second integer... We know it's got a difference of 6, so either it's going to be x plus 6 or x minus 6. And again, you can choose whichever you prefer, whether you use x plus 6 or x minus 6. Now, just for argument's sake, I'm going to go for x plus 6 as the second integer. So now it says that the integers are multiplied together and 9 is added. Prove algebraically that the result will always be a square number. So for this, if I go for the multiple, which is x, the second integer is x plus 6, and I then add 9. This is what I want to show proves to always be a square number. So again, expanding this out, what I end up with is x squared plus 6x plus 9. Then if I factorise this, I have x plus 3, x plus 3, which
which can be commonly written as x plus 3 squared. So as you can see, for all values of x, the solution or the result will always be a square number. And there we go. Moving on to question five, it says g is directly proportional to the square root of h. g to h is in the ratio of 3 to 2 when h is 16. Work out g of h when h is 100. So for this, what we need to first do, is it says direct proportion. So what I need to do is first of all set up my formula. So I've got g is proportional to square root of h. I then replace the proportional symbol with equals k. And then from this, what I then want to do is then if I substitute h equals 16, so when h equals 16, then what I end up here with is g equals 16 over 2 times 3 equals 24. Now again, if you're not sure about where this has come from, is basically it's come from using this information here, simply because h is two parts and g is three parts. So to find out one part, once I know what h is, I divide that by two to find out what one part is. So if I just put this in brackets, this is what one part is. I multiply by three to find out what three parts is, and that gives me my g value. Now, so what I then know is I then know that when h equals 16, g equals 24, which is again, when dealing with any direct proportional question, it's really important for you to then go on and solve. Now from this, what I could then use is use this to find k. So from this, what I've then got, if I take this formula here, I've then got g equals k root h, substitute the values of 16 and 24, in which I've got 24, equals k square root of 16 which then goes on to be 24 equals k of 4 so therefore k equals 6 so once i know the value of k i can then write down the formula so here the formula and again this is going to be all over the place apologies but again I'm just trying to fit it all on the screen so you can see so the formula then is going to be g equals 4 root h So then using this formula, what I can then do is answer this question. So when h equals 100, I've got g equals 4 lots of square root of 100. So g equals 4 times 10. So g equals, actually not 4, I don't know where I've got 4 from. Apologies, that should be 6. gives us 60 which gives us a much realistic answer and there we go so we're still not finished because like I said we just need to write this as a fraction because the question is asking us to work out the ratio of g to h so here if I write down g to h g is 60 h is 100 which ultimately simplifies to give me 3 to 5 so my answer is 3 to 5 Moving on to question six, it says that a solid shape is made from centimeter cubes. The front elevation and side elevation of the shape are shown. Work out the maximum possible number of cubes in this shape and the minimum number of cubes in this shape. Now, I'll be honest, this question is very, least, very stingily marked um, in terms of giving you three marks. And you kind of need to visualize what the shape is actually going to look like, both the maximum and the minimum. Now, if I just zoom out so we can just see a little bit more space and of course it's going to reset so I'm just scroll down back to the question and let me show you what the two diagrams should look like now again when I looked at the, the examiner's report for this particular question there was a lot of discussion about this question in terms of pupils different variations so let me just explain where particularly the minimum one doesn't may not be the answer you get and you probably need to not think as hard and smart about working this out in terms of the minimum number of Shape. So in terms of the maximum volume, then the shape is going to look something like this. And 
again, just excuse my artistic skills. So that's the maximum volume it's going to be. And if I just write down the dimension, so this is going to be 9, this is going to be 8, this is going to be 12, this length here is going to be 7, this length here is going to be 2, and this length here is going to be 5, and this therefore is going to be 3. And then we just put a dotted line there. So what I need to then do is work out the volume. And if I just call this part here A, and this block here B, so this bit here is B, this bit here is A. So the volume of A plus the volume of B. So the volume of A is going to be 5 times 2 times 12. And the volume of B is going to be 9, oh sorry, it's going to be 7 times 8 times 12. And calculating them all up, I get an answer of 792 centimeter square. So that there is my max volume. Then to work out the minimum, now this is where it gets a little bit more controversial. So let me just zoom down a little bit so we can see it clearly. Now what the actual shape is going to look like, it's going to look something like this. Just make that line a little bit more accurate, in which it should look something like this. Now, if I just label what the dimensions are going to be, so here we're going to end up with 8, 9, that's going to be 1. This bit here is going to be, now if I just kind of do the hidden dimensions of that, and this length here is going to be 11. This length here is going to be 9. This part here, if I just cut this in two bits, so that bit there is 1. And this bit here is going to be 11. And if I just call this bit here, again, A. And this bit here, B. So this is B and this is A. So for the minimum, it equals the volume of A plus the volume of B. Now the volume of A is that yellow block, which is, and again, this is one here. So that's going to be one times nine times 11. And the volume of B is going to be 9 uh, is going to be, well, I need splits up into two parts. So this length here is 2. And this length here is 7. So it's going to be 5 times 2 times 1 in terms of thickness plus and then the bottom block which is going to be 7 times 8 times 1. Then from this all I then need to do is work this out. So this bit here is going to be 99. 5 times 10 plus 1 is 10 and 7 times 8 times 1 is 56. So if I add all of those three numbers up I get an answer of 165 centimeters square. Now those two answers are the answers that you need to write. Now again, let me just go over what some people did in the actual exam for this particular question. Now what people did is basically they saw that this block here could have been deleted. Like you could have taken that block out, the corner. But the problem is, is the fact that it therefore would not be a solid because you'd have two separate parts that would come together. They wouldn't be connected. Now some people did argue that maybe you could have one block connecting them. 
but again that wasn't allowed so although that lateral thinking maybe is connecting with minimum blocks so you could take out those nine blocks that are in that corner you could use let's say eight and have it like a single piece so what it would look like is something like and again just excuse the drawing of this so this is the back plate and then we've got our sort of L shape like so and you've got this little one square that you might find that connects those two but that was not allowed because it will not represent a solid shape Moving on to question seven, it says that shape A and shape B are shown on the grid and it says describe the single transformation that maps shape A to shape B. So we're going from this shape, oh, we're going from shape A to shape B. So for this, we can definitely say that it's an enlargement. We know it's got, it's flipped, so therefore the scale factor is going to be negative and comparing one of the lengths, so this is four, this is going to be two. So it's going from two to four, which is going to be minus a half. Now, the next thing that's all that's left for us to do is to find the center. Now, to find the center, all I need to do, so if I just get rid of the markings on the diagram, all I need to do is connect the corresponding points up. So if I just get a straight edge, so if I go for this corner with this point here, now, ultimately, you sure you really need to do this with two points, but I would say three just to double make sure. So then I've got this corner here. And again, when you're doing this question in the exam, you always want to make sure that you can clearly see the lines that you're drawing. And let's just do a third point. So this point here is going to connect. And again, once you've drawn the third, it should just all but confirm what your original two lines was kind of intersecting at. And there we go. So we can see that my center of enlargement is this point here. So the center is going to be 7, 4. And there we go for that one. Now moving on to our very last question. It says that a boat sails 35 kilometers north from A to B. From B, the boat then sails to C and then back to A. Show that the distance of the boat sails from C to A is 79 kilometers to the nearest kilometer and you must show you're working out. Now for this, this is basically a cosine rule question. So the cosine rule looks like x squared for the length because that's what we're finding. A squared plus, sorry, not A squared, it's B squared. And can we just change that? to an a so a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus bracket 2bc cos a now in the official formula it hasn't got brackets around the 2b cos a but i strongly would recommend you do that uh, just to save you from making any silly mistakes so from this if i just label the points so this point here i need to work out the angle which is going to be 100 so this is going to be my x or my a value this is going to be my b this is my c and 100 is going to be my capital A. So from this, I can then use the formula, which I'll do over here. So I know that A is X, B is 65, C is 35, and capital A is 100. So substituting this in, I get X squared equals 65 squared plus 35 squared minus 2 times 65. Let me just get rid of whatever number that is. 65 times 35 times cos of 100 and if i enter that correctly into my calculator get an x squared value of 6240.099 and a few extra digits so then if i square root that answer i get 78.994 so rounding this up to the nearest integer equals 79 it's going to be kilometers to no zero decimal places which is exactly what they wanted me to show. Now moving on to part B, it says work out the bearing of A from C. So what this question is asking me to find is basically what this angle here is going to be. Now I know from common sense that that is going to be a reflex angle so I'm looking for an answer that is bigger than 180 and I would say it's definitely going to be less than 270. 
so from this what I then need to do is I need to work out what this angle here is first so if I just call that Y now I know that A is 79 kilometers so in terms of the length of A to C which I've just deleted so if I take that triangle out and uh, let me just go back to B and I draw a similar triangle out so I've got something that looks like this this point here is B this is A this is C I know that this angle here is 100 I know that this length here is 35 I know that this length here is 65 and from part A I know that this line here is 79 so what I need to do is I need to work out what this angle here is which I'm just going to call Y so from this diagram I need to use the sine rule so use the sine rule to find Y so the two so I need to find corresponding angles inside so here I'm going to use 100 I just highlight I'm going to use 179 and I'm going to use 35 and Y so substituting that into the sine rule which is this here in which I've got a which I'm going to take as being 79 over sine 100 equals 35 over sine y now if I do a bit of rearranging and cross multiplying I get 79 sine y equals 35 sine 100 then taking the 79 over to the side I get sine y equals 35 sine 100 over 79 so therefore y equals the inverse sine of 35 sine 100 over 79 now if I put that all into my calculator I get a y value of 25.8685 blah 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 now if I go back to the original diagram so from this if I just get rid of the y I now know that this angle here is 25 oh, let me just write that a little bit bigger so this angle here is 25.8685 with a few more extra points now in terms of working out the bearing to work out that pink angle I also now need to work out what this angle here is now one thing I do notice about bearings I've got parallel lines so this is going to be parallel to this so therefore to work out what this angle here is which I'm just going to shade in as purple this is supplementary to 80 degrees and so what do we know about supplementary angles they're up to 180 so this is going to be 180 minus 80 which equals 100 degrees so this angle here is 100 degrees so to work out what that pink angle is all I then need to do is do 360 minus 100 minus 25.8685 whatever you've rounded that number to and that should give me the answer that I'm looking for which is 234.1314957 now you might have a sort of rounded answer that's close to that but then because it's a bearing we need to give it as a, an integer so it's going to give me 234 degrees as my final answer and there we go